anybody out there. It's been a couple of days for me. It's midnight in Phoenix, Arizona. Actually, 11.59. It's a warm one today. It was a hot one. How you doing? Somebody just popped in here. Probably gone already. Hey, good morning. It is midnight in Arizona. Been a couple of days since I've been here. Billy Travis, how you doing? People are popular. Just if you pop in, say hi. Where are you from? I'm going to be turning this bowl here in a minute. I thought I'd wait. I'll get my eyes on. Yeah, I see people. I see y'all popping in, popping out. Preston Clark, you're gone wherever you are. Somebody just popped in. Savage. Okay. Well, well, well. <clears throat> yeah. Brandon, how you doing? Dayton, how you doing? Nobody's here. Nobody wants to stick around. Stick around with me for a while. Well, somebody's here. James, Emma, Gary, Jacob. Anybody sticking with me? These are some crazy names that pop up on here. <laughs> well, 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 well. It says I got seven people. Me, how you doing, me? <clears throat> okay. Evan. If that's your first name, Evan. That's my grandson's name. Twelve people. Let's get going here. Wow. Okay. Got 13 people. I'm <clears throat> going to be turning a little bowl here. This is ash and walnut. And uh, I like them both. I love walnut and ash. I had only done one bowl of con all uh, completely ash. It was beautiful. Oh, okay. All right, Evan. That's your middle name. Well, that's I go by, uh, by my middle name. My middle name's Edward. I go by Ed. And I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. And this is what we do here. So, yeah, eight people I got here. <clears throat> oh, happy Father's Day to everybody. It is Father's Day, actually, now in Arizona. It's 12.03, so uh, happy Father's Day to you fathers out there, grandfathers. Also, I'm a grandfather. I have a whole bunch of grandkids. And it's wonderful. But, uh, yeah. We'll get popping on here in a minute. I like to talk a little bit and say hi to people. You know, I got, it's like seven people. And this is, like I said, this is ash and walnut. I love both these woods. I thought I would uh, Put a little accent on there. This is going to be the inside. This is going to be the bottom, obviously. And uh, we're going to carve this out here a little bit. And I have no idea what it's going to look like. Thank you for the follow. Evan, I appreciate that. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's been two days since I was going to be. I was going to be back on two days, but it was just a, a timing factor. No, I haven't. A duplicator. No, I have never done that. Not, I'm not familiar with that. I'm fairly new at turning stuff on lathe. 
I've only been doing this on and off for 15 months when I bought this lathe. So uh, I, I, I don't do this for a living. This is just pure hobby and fun. I'm retired. Duplicated on a lathe. I, I think I know what you mean. I think I've seen something like that on YouTube, but not real familiar with it. You're probably more familiar. I guess your name is Doug. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, got 12 people, nine people, they pop in and pop out. So, but, uh, yeah, duplicator. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. Well, great. Uh, I'll, ha I'll have to check into that a little bit more. Uh, what it's the duplicator. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I, when I start carving one of these days, I don't have a blueprint. I just start carving and see how, what direction it goes. You know? <laughs> All right. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. Have have a good night in, 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 okay, Evan in Tennessee. Awesome. Hope I get to see you again soon. All right. But I come out here because it's a lot cool. This is Arizona. It was hot today. It was really hot. Christian, how you, how you doing, Christian? But, uh, okay. Well, let's get going on this thing so I don't keep boring you with my yakking here. But, uh, Evan, uh, if you're still there, I thought it would be three hours ahead of me in, uh, in Tennessee. So, I guess it's considered the middle of the country, I guess. Um, let's walk on this. Let's get going.
thank you for the follow. Appreciate it, Cooper. If I can see it right. Appreciate it. Hey there. Hey Joey, what's up, bud? I haven't been on for a couple of days. I thought I was going to be on a couple of, uh, maybe a day or so ago, but it didn't happen. Boy, this stuff is, it carves out nice. This is ash and walnut. And now, I'll tell you, I've already got a lot of sawdust on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Let me get my eyes on so I can see. It's going to be a nice little bowl. I love walnut and ash. I've never put the two together before. I think you were uh, on with me the other night when I was working on this one. This is a mesquite out of a log I had for years, probably 11 years. And it's a nice little mug, you pencil holder, or put fake flowers in there, or put your cigars in there if you like that stuff. But uh, yeah, I think you were watching me do this. So this is the one, that last one I turned on the lathe. And uh, so I thought I would do a little bowl from ash and walnut. I thought I'd put the combination together, never done that before. I think you remember this. 
turn out pretty nice. I just gotta fill in the little holes and that'll be done. But I love this, it's just so organic, you know. I did put some about four coats of polyurethane on it to give it that high shine. But there's the end of the log. And then you got, looks like where it split, there's two, looks like probably two branches came out here. So, there you go, there it is. And here's the one I did before that. That's a little bit shorter. But it's got some beautiful grain to it. it looks like paint kind of dripped down on the side, but that's all just wood grain. Another little pencil holder or whatever you want to use it for. Coin, put your coin in. Yeah, there they are. Pretty cool. All free wood, too. There was a tree that fell down many years ago where I used to work, a big old mesquite tree, and we had it chopped up, and most of us took a some of it home. It was so much. It's a lot. And, uh... Okay, Joey. I'll talk to you later. Have a good night. Sleep well. Anyway, she took a bunch of that wood home and I kept it for years. Forgot about it. It was at my other property. So here we go. Let's keep carving this out a little bit. How you doing from Missouri? Appreciate you coming in. Appreciate it. John, how you doing, John? And, boy, it's hard to see without my glasses. 
anyways, I appreciate y'all coming in here, hanging out with me for a while. I'm Ed from Arizona. I'm making a little bowl out of ash and walnut. We'll see how it goes. Yes, it's hot in Arizona. That's why I'm out here at midnight. Actually, after midnight, it's 12:24 Arizona in the morning. Yeah, it was it was a booger today. Um, 118 probably, maybe something like that. It was hot, but uh, yeah, I got my little cooler on here. I got it on low. Otherwise, it's too noisy with it on high. Clean up a little bit of this mess here. It's a lot of wood already.
crash. My broom fell down. <laughs> what do we got going on out here? Let's stop for a minute. I'm going to start boring this thing out here in a minute. Yeah, 1312. Oh, yeah, good grief. Appreciate y'all coming in. Hello from Texas. Where about in Texas? I lived in uh, Longview for 17 years. And I have a son that lives in Louisville, Dallas area. And uh, I have a daughter that lives in East Texas. So they're all spread out. Yeah, you live in Longview? Wow, I lived there for 17 years. Yep, I sure did. Longview, Texas. 17 years. Wow. So, it's great. I'm just making a little bowl here. I just got a simple little design on it, nothing too fancy. But I'm going to start boring it out, then I'm going to scoop it out. 40 years in Longview. <laughs> yeah, I live there, but I, I'm from Arizona, so I finally got to come back home, which I'm happy because this is where I'm from. But, uh, I'm going to start boring it out a little bit, then I'm going to scoop the rest of it out. This makes it go faster. Some people might consider it cheating, but however you get the job done, right? We probably know a lot of the same people in in Longview, I would assume that. But, uh, <coughs> yeah. Did you all, did you ever uh, know somebody named Buddy and Linda Guthrie? You might have known them. They, they don't live there anymore. They, they moved to West Texas. I'm not sure what town they live in. Great people. Everybody knew Buddy Guthrie. Okay. Yeah, I'm retired also. I've been retired for about six years now. Yeah, come on out to Arizona. Hard to find houses. But, uh, yeah. So. 40 years in Longview, Texas. Anyways, I'm going to start boring this out. We're going <clears> to... <throat> Have the wet back on, suck out some of the dust. Won't get it all, but I'll get some of it.
Okay. First responder, does that mean a fire firefighter or, or a police officer? Yeah. Yeah, the Guthries were there for a long time. Buddy's mom lived to be a hundred, and I had bought her house that she originally owned, and I was the second owner of a house she bought like in 1948. <laughs> Yeah, great people, though. I really I miss them. Yeah, I, I'm not from Longview. Obviously, I'm from Arizona, but I lived there for 17 years. So, but yeah, like I said, I have a daughter that lives out there. Well, it's good to talk to you. I'm just going to continue to pour this out about so, and then I'm going to carve the rest of it out with my chisels. It just speeds up the process. So here we go. Let's get going. Pine tree? Yeah. So did I. I lived off of, uh, on, on Duncan Street, just off of Premier Road. I'm sure you know where that is. <laughs> that old refinery. I lived in that old neighborhood, but I had an acre of land, a nice little house, and I did a lot of remodeling to it also. But, it, but it was time to come home. 2007, that's when I come back. Well, you know what? 
I just bought this bit, and this is only the second time I used it. It's already uh, kind of dull. I'm going to see if I can put a larger bit on it and see if we can uh, make that work. Can't believe that thing's already dull. But I'm going into ash. Sorry about that. I'm here. Oh, boy. I don't know. Hope this works. Yeah, the uh, walnut is wonderful to work with. This right here, the ash is a little bit more, a little tough. So once I started hitting that ash, that bit, I used it on one other thing that I made, and it's dull already. And I, it shouldn't be, but it is. It's brand new. I just bought it. Oh, well, that's the way it is. Let's get going with this thing. I've tried sharpening them, but I now have a place I can take them and get them sharpened for 10 bucks each as opposed to 30 some dollars. So that'll be a lot better financially.
Thank you for the follow, Michael. Yeah, appreciate you guys following me. Sorry if I'm not saying hi to everybody. They pop in and pop out so fast. So, Glenn, how you doing, Glenn? Joseph? Michael? Yeah. Anyways, thank you, everybody, for hanging out with me. I'm sure it's late wherever you're at. My eyes on. Wow. Ah. Yeah. I'm making just a little bowl. It's um, I don't know, about five and a half inches, I think. Hang on. see it's about three and three quarters this way and five and three eighths that way nothing fancy but uh, this, this is a brand new bit here it's a two and a half inch that one was two and three eighths so we're gonna make it a little bit then I'm gonna scoop the rest of it out and we'll be ready to sand it so and this will, when I sand this, this little sharp edge will smooth out a little bit. I make simple designs. Have you ever watched The Blind Woodsman? Or actually seen his stuff on here? He's a, he's a blind woodworker. He does this, but he's completely blind and he's awesome. <clears throat> Check him out if you haven't seen him already. <clears throat>
Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Top Gun. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm sure you uh, also serve in the military. By the name of Top Gun, I, I would assume you are. <laughs> Well, there's 20. I got 20 people on here. That's awesome. I don't have that many people during the day when I do it. So I've been coming out here late at night after I've slept a while, and uh, it's cooler. In Arizona, in the garage, it gets pretty darn hot, you know. So uh, it is what it is. Yeah, it's my little... My little cooler is blowing out about 74 degrees, and uh, but it's actually still warm in here. I don't know how what the temperature is over there, but anyways, it's hot. Okay, thank you for your service. Yeah, yeah, I was I was in the army a long time ago. Okay, four years in the Air Force. Awesome. My son was in the Air Force for eight years. He lives in, uh, like the Dallas area, Louis Louisville, and um, and you were a medic. So that just kind of you kind of rolled that over into civilian life. Looks like so that's great, great training. I think the military does do a good job of the training, without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Clayton, how you doing? Crazy Crafter, 96, how you doing? But, uh,
Yeah. Well, well, well. Good to have all of you. It's getting a little dusty in here. Whew. But not bad. Stone man. It's almost one o'clock. I've almost been doing this for an hour, but I stop and chitty chat for a while here and there. Let, let me finish boring this out so we can start scooping some of this out. So. Be right back. I get a flashlight so I can see it further. Never, I, I, I landed in uh, Tokyo when I was going overseas, but we stayed in the airplane, so I can't say I, I can say I was in Tokyo, you know, uh, Japan and all. I think it's so hard to remember. I know I was in Hong Kong for about seven hours over a, a, a delay on flight. Uh, been to Guam there again, just stopping. Never got to 
I wasn't stationed in, in any of those. Uh, but uh, but my, I took my basic training in 1970 at Fort Lewis, Washington, which is now McCord and Washington, uh, uh, Fort Lewis. And McCord, my son was stationed in uh, Washington for most of his Air Force career. So, yeah, he was stationed there in Washington forever until he got out. But he was here and there too, he, other places. <laughs> you got lost, huh? Yeah. Didn't have GPSs in those days. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to try to scoop this out. 16 people. How you doing, people? Yeah. Well, well, well. Let's move down here a second. Go. Let's see. I guess those languages in Japan are probably. I think they're the toughest languages to learn. Um, I guess. American or English is hard because of, we have so many different words being the same thing, like there, there, and there. <laughs> I'm going to go sharpen my tool. I'll be right back. Put a little edge on it. Yeah, I was uh, I was into helicopters. I was a crew chief on a Hueys, the old workhorses. They still fly them around now and then. I think they use them for training. But I'm not real sure about all that. Yeah, helicopters. That was my duty. But I'm going to start scooping this out. I'm going to have to get way in there. This is a little thicker than I normally use. So it's pretty, I can't remember what I say. Three and three quarter. Yeah, three and three quarter. Woo! That's pretty thick for me.
Yeah, I was in basic training in 1970, Fort Lewis, Washington, during the winter. <laughs> you take a boy from Arizona and ship him there. We all got sick, almost had pneumonia, he ended up in the hospital for eight days, just hacking our brains out. San Antonio. Yeah. San Antonio, I believe that's where my son took basic training. Yeah. I was there for his graduation from basic. That was pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> Long time ago. I'm old. I'm 70 years old now. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm an old dude. Well, let's see if I can get this scooped out here without blowing it off this thing. I think so, you know, especially we all come from different climates. You know, I'm used to this dry climate, not super cold in the winter. And then you go there, it's pouring down rain and you're, you're jogging in your wet weather gear, you're sweating and then you cool down and then you get hot and you get, and that's what makes you sick. You know, because we're jogging in this rain gear in the rain to get to your next place for uh, training, and then you cool down. It's, it's nuts. It's nuts. So, but anyways, so having said that. That's why I got sick. <laughs> yeah, we marched everywhere too, full gear, full gear most of the time. Uh, it's crazy. So I'm trying to catch up here on the conversation. Everyone around me at Fort Jackson was sick as a dog. Yeah, I, I, I believe that. <laughs> we were too. We were sick. All of us. A lot of us were. And then my boots didn't fit right. And in, in Washington, it has nothing but rocks to march on. It's all rocks. You can ask anybody that took basic day or live, live there. It's all rocks. It's crazy. But uh, anyway, Lupita, Chucky, how you doing? I appreciate everybody sticking around with me. Let me start scooping this out a little bit. Okie dokie, let's rock and roll with this thing. <coughs>
Fechou? Oh, here we go. Get my glasses on so I can see what's going on around here. August. I'm an August baby. I was born in Phoenix, Arizona in August. How about you? Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Yeah. Trying to get this scooped out here. So it, it's, it's kind of deep. October, baby. Well, I'm older than you, dude. <laughs> oh, well. I guess it's all in the mind. But my body tells me different. <laughs> That's all right. I'm glad I'm still around. What about you? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you were here when I showed everybody. This is what I made last time out of mesquite, totally organic piece of wood. You can put pencils in it, fake flowers, cigars. Whatever, you know, change. But that's some beautiful wood. I had it in my other property for oh, probably 11 years, I'll bet, 10, 11 years. I forgot about it. So I drug it over here, and I've been cutting it up, making things. That's pretty, isn't it? And here, here's another one out of the same piece of wood. This is a little bit shorter, you know. A little stubby guy, but uh, look at that grain. I mean, you know, it's all organic. But I did put polyurethane on it to give it that high shine. I love it. But, uh,
Thank you. Out of the way, tech. <laughs> I guess I need to get my imagination on that one. Appreciate you guys hanging out here with me. It is 1.14 in Arizona. I'll probably shut this down a little bit. I'm, I don't know if I'll finish this up tonight or not. We'll see. Depends on where I feel. But I'm getting it carved out pretty well. Got to scoop it out. Yeah, I've done a lot of stuff. If you look at my last uh, one minute reveal, I did a, a rolling pin. And uh, it turned out really pretty. Check it out. <laughs> you don't have to call me, sir. I'm Ed. Just call me Ed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just call me Ed. That's what I go by. That's my middle name, Edward. Never went by my first name. My dad did, but I've been turning wood. I bought this lathe about 15 months ago, so on and off for 15 months. I don't do it every day, and if I do, uh, I'll be on it for a couple hours. Uh, but when I'm on live, obviously I'm on a lot longer because I stop and talk to people and get to know y'all, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, I go by Ed. You notice it says Ed the Desert Rat. That's kind of what we call ourselves in Arizona. If you're from Arizona, you're a desert rat. Just kind of been a nickname. I don't know how it got started, but it, I've always heard it all my life. So, Ed the Desert Rat. EDD. If you on my YouTube, you can look up my all my YouTube all these uh, live ones I put on uh, on YouTube. I upload them on YouTube and. Uh, Every one of them's on there, even all my reveals and other family stuff with my grandkids, just things, you know, your life stuff. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, it's a fun hobby, yeah. And I have a lot of hobbies. I have too many hobbies, I think. <laughs> I, got, I like to garden, you know, I, I like to play guitar and stuff. But, uh, but uh, yeah. I've only been doing this for a while, and, um, I, I have my good, bad, and uglies, you know, but you learn. Anyways, go go to YouTube, Ed the Desert Rat. Ed with two Ds, Ed the Desert Rat. If you uh, want to miss anything or you can speed it up. This is what's nice about YouTube. You can speed it up and, and cut out all the stuff. You get to see the final re product or because I do put the whole thing on there, not just part of it. Yeah, I'm self-taught. I just get in there. I turned my one and only bowl when I was about... 12, 13 years old at the Phoenix Boys Club, and they had a full shop there. I'm sure they don't have it no more because it's been replaced by a bunch of computers and stuff. But yeah, they had a great wood shop. You could do anything in there. You could make jewelry. They had tumblers there. You could put your stone in there, and they would have it set for you in silver, too. They'd send it off and set it for you. And my brother and I both made rings. I don't know what happened to those rings, but I wished I'd had them. But uh, long story short, uh, and then I gave it to my mom. So I know my mom was, that's why I know I was probably 12, 13, because my mom died when I was 14. So I know I gave it to her. I don't know what happened to that bowl after she passed away. So, but uh, anyway, so yeah, I, then I bought my first lathe because I've always wanted one 15 months ago. Um, and I've basically been hooked on it ever since. But, you know, go look at all my reveals. Primarily, that's all I've got on here. I got some other little things here and there, but mostly it's all woodworking. Reveals of what I made. Yep, self-taught. You know, I, I, I did cheat. I did sit. When I first got this, I sat and watched YouTube for hours, watching those pros, those guys that know what they're doing, that they've been doing it for 40 years. They teach other people, and they're, they're very good. So, but I've got some things I haven't tackled yet. I want to eventually make one that's got a lid on a bowl. I have not done that yet. I chose my lathe 
because of, first of all, space. I have a double garage and I have this thing stuffed full of tools and workbenches. So that was the first thing. And the second thing was cost. Um, how much can I afford? And if I didn't get into it much, I didn't want to have a lot of money tied up into it. So that was the second factor. And uh, so I went with a little tabletop win, W-E-N. It's a tabletop, and it's affordable for the most part, unless you ain't got no money. <laughs> so, but uh, it's affordable, but you have to start buying different things, different tools, different chucks that you use. You just kind of add to your whatever's going to work for you. But I, I do other woodworking stuff, but lately I've just been doing a lot on the lathe because it's just so much fun. And every time you do something, it's a, it's a new, you take a piece of block of wood and you make something beautiful out of it. Or an old log, you know, like I did with that mesquite. But I have, yeah, check out Ed the Desert Rat, all my reveals are on there. I just revealed one, I put one on today of a, uh, a rolling pin. And, uh. Out of some kind of, uh, it's called tamarind wood. I don't know if I pronounce it right, but that's it's T A M A R I N D. Tamarind wood. It's a rolling pin. Real pretty grain on it. You'll see it. It's the last reveal I did. Yeah, check out all the stuff. You go, like I said, <laughs> but with YouTube, you can see all my live videos that I've done. Every one of them are on there. And I'm a little behind on a couple reveals. I got to do one tomorrow. Of, of those two little pieces I showed you, I'm going to do a reveal. I have not done a reveal on those two items yet. But, uh, yeah. So, well, let's see. I, I'm, I'm getting there. I, I've got this pretty carved out. I got to scoop this out in here. That's going to be tough because it's small and you got to get your tool in there. And that's pretty tough to get a big old tool in there. So, wish me luck. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I appreciate all you guys, all the all the uh, all the follows. I appreciate the follows. I do. I don't do this to get follows, but it's just kind of a, a byproduct of being on live. People are going to want to follow you and see what you do because there's a lot of guys that do this live, uh, and then we would kind of have a little small nucleus of guys that we kind of uh, encourage one another, spin off off of each other's ideas, and uh, just kind of have a little bit of a camaraderie, if you will. <laughs> but uh, it's fun. It's fun to have a common interest with other guys and girl. Actually, there's a there's a lady on here that I saw tonight. She was on there. I can't remember her name. I've I, I she's now I'm following her now, and uh, she's really good too. I think her name was Lori something. But anyways. You just have to wait till they pop up sometimes on, on a live, probably on a for you to for you. What do you call it? For you page or site or whatever they call it. Yeah, I I did too when I was a kid. My dad was a carpenter, and um, and the houses we lived in it was track home that my dad helped build, and my also my neighbors on either side they all were carpenters, and I watched those guys. I was just infatuated with anybody that making anything, building anything. I wanted to be there and watch it as a small child, you know. So I love it. I love anything construction. I don't care if you're building them. I'm not a motorcycle guy, but I love watching them build those things. They're beautiful work. They do the design, the craftsmanship, uh, cars. I love to watch all that stuff. It doesn't matter what it is. If it has to do with and even in artwork, I love artwork too. So anything that you take something and you make something beautiful with, I'm in. I love it. So I'm with you on that. But uh, yeah, I'm getting there. I'm almost got it scooped out. It's a little, I need to work on it right here and then right in here. But uh, we can do it. We can do it. Yeah, I got to round this off. When I sand it, this is going to round off. It's kind of sharp edge. I don't know if you can see that. 
that right there. But when I sand it, it'll smooth itself out a little bit. So it'll be all right. Oh, yeah. I love to watch this old house. And I, I like to watch the show Fixer Upper and all those shows, you know. I even like to watch Trading Spaces when it was really big and popular way back when. And, uh, but uh, it's just something I enjoy doing. I, design, I like design. I like architecture of any kind. So, like I said, I'll watch anything that has to do with craftsmanship. Anything at all. <laughs> there you go. Very good, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy. It's all right. It's all good. Well, I appreciate you hanging in there with me, guys. Let me go ahead and start. See if I can get in there without blowing this thing off of here. I hope I don't go too far and expose my little mount screws. The mount screws go into about here, and if I go too far, sometimes I expose those, and it kind of messes things up a little bit. Out of the way, Peggy. All right. I, yeah, I've just followed you, too, so <laughs> I follow both of you. All right. Let me, uh, let me get this thing in here a little bit. Maybe I can... Uh, that'll work. Let's see what we can do. Yeah. Yeah, I have I, I have good content on here. Um no need for all that stuff that we don't need to hear. And, you know, if the thing about it, some kids might be watching. Maybe not right now, but anytime I do, I, you know, kids could be watching. We don't need, we get, as adults, we need to be adults. And remember, we don't need to have children listen to bad language and bad content. It's, it's not necessary. It doesn't prove anything at all. So I try to, I keep everything clean on here. I'm not for it. Don't want it. Don't need it. Not necessary. So let's get going. Let's see if I can scoop this out a little bit more.
Well, I'm ready to start doing some sanding. Let's put some sandpaper on this thing. That's a lot of wood coming out of that little bowl. Unbelievable. You wouldn't believe how much wood comes out of one of these things. It's, I've already picked it up once. You can only see what's down below here. Yeah. So. Let's put a little sandpaper on it. starting off with a hunter grit yeah this is ash and walnut I love walnut ash is really nice too it's a little bit harder walnut it's just it's so when you when you carve it it's so smooth it's beautiful wood it's one of my favorite woods oak is not one of my favorite woods and leopard wood an exotic wood called leopard wood very tough and purple hearts, another exotic wood that's tough. And uh, you'll see my reveals. If you look on my one minute videos, my reveals, you kind of have to go back. I don't know where it is, it's back there somewhere. On the purple heart, get come out the great because it's hard to sand that stuff. And then, uh, and then the, the leopard wood was another tough one, but oak can't say it's one of my favorite. It's just so hard, you know. So, ash. Walnut. Love walnut. I'm liking ash. This is the second time I've used ash on one of my reveals. I think I, think I did a reveal on the ash. I think. I have to look back. Anyways, I made a little bowl out of ash. Beautiful wood. I like it. So let's get to sanding this thing.
Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. All right. I got everything done. I'm just going. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to put some wax on. This is what I use. Everything's backwards, as you well know. It's feed and wax. It's beeswax. You, you can get it anywhere. Home Depot, Lowe's, probably even Walmart. I, I'm not sure about that part, but either way, it's very common. You got kicked off. I didn't kick you off, buddy. <laughs> maybe my maybe our connection's been bad. I don't know. I haven't really paid attention to that little... It says I got a good connection, but I'm sorry you got kicked off. I don't kick off nobody. I don't even know how to do it anyways. <laughs> I think the only way I would, if I could even know how to do that, kick somebody, if they were being foul and being ugly and vulgar, I, we don't put up with that nonsense. No necessary. This is wood, about woodworking and craftsmanship and just being kind to one another, encourage one another. Uh, there's a few people that have been encouraged by what me and a few other guys have been doing. They bought lathes now. They're getting lathes and starting their own woodworking. And one young lady is uh, actually took a woodworking class right now, and she's doing well. So she's really uh, getting into it. Hey, anybody can do this. you got to put your mind into it. Yeah. Just do it, as they say. Let's get some wax on this. Let's watch how it comes to life. We're going to bring this bad boy to life. Yeah, I'm just using this wax. Uh, I'm going to leave it natural. I noticed when I put wax on the last ash bowl I used, I like the way it came out, just natural. So we're not going to put no polyurethane on it because it takes so many coats to make it high shine. Some things, you look at it, you go, it needs polyurethane, a nice high shine. And some things you just want to go, you know, I want to leave it natural. Yeah. Maybe, well, yeah. Well, I'm, back. I'm glad you're back. <laughs> anyway, let's put some, uh, we're going to wax this bad boy up. Sorry about that. <laughs> Here we go. It's a pretty one. Obviously, this wax will soak in pretty good, and I'll I'll do another coat, but uh, I'll pull this off the lathe, and I'll get it up close so you can you can all see it really nicely. I think I like this real simple design, not too crazy fancy. I think simplicity sometimes is best. You know, let the grain speak for itself rather than the design, and the design is important too. But sometimes just let the, the wood speak for itself. Hit it with the spray paint. No, we, we don't paint wood here. <laughs> I hope you're kidding. Now, I think that's one thing guys have in common is we don't like to paint beautiful wood. Uh, you want to fine but I, I can't I can't uh, yeah I'm gonna I'll take it off and I'll bring it up close so you can see it uh, 
the ass has got some pretty grain right here. Pretty generic here, but I just wanted to offset it a little bit with this walnut. I thought that would be really cool. So that's why I did it. You know, I haven't been on more than almost two hours, but of course I've been stopping and talking. Normally I could, you can knock one out in about an hour. If you just get busy and not stop, you can knock it out. So you take something, a block of wood, next thing you know, you got something beautiful. So I think that's awesome. Well, let's pull it off so you can see it. Hey, this is a monster. I'll get it off. Hey, maybe it's stuck on there pretty good. My tool just bent. Are you kidding me? Look at that. That thing's on there. <laughs> I think I have another tool. Hang on. I've never had one that tough. That has been, I don't know why it's so tough. I don't know why. That's too big. This is going to be too wide again. Yeah. Well, I thought I was going to take it off. <laughs> I've never not been able to get these things off. There we go. Voila. I can't believe I bent a wrench doing that. Cheapo. Okay. <laughs> Took a while, didn't it? Now look how beautiful that is. I, I like the grain here, the ash. Is that too close? Sometimes it distorts. My daughter says sometimes I put these things up too close, so. But look how beautiful that is. I think that I think that's a nice contrast between the ash and the uh, walnut. What do you think, folks? Is that a keeper? There you go. Yeah, just wax. I think it made it look really just natural. I didn't want to put you know, poly on it. Polyurethane is, I, like I said, I think it worked with some wood. Sometimes I think you just got to go with the natural look. And that's what I wanted to do with this. Yep, great contrast. Yeah. Walnut and ash. American wood. They grow it here in America. Not Arizona, I don't think. Yeah, it's definitely a keeper. I like this little guy. Didn't take long. Like I said, I haven't even been on for two hours yet. I started just, a, well, I came on live about 12, but then I talked for a while, try to, until people start popping in and then just get a little crowd and try to, you know, get some conversation going on. So there you have it. Can't believe how hard that thing was to get off. <laughs> That's all right. Well, you have t other tools. Believe me, I've got a lot of tools in this place.
I think in one of my videos, I, I went live and I didn't turn anything. I just basically talked to a few guys and then I, I, did, I gave a little tour of the shop. You know, it's, it's just kind of piled in here as far as it's, a, it's an organized mess. <laughs> but, uh, anyhow, I'll go with that. I like that. We'll put some on again tomorrow. That's awesome. I'm happy with it. Good old beeswax. Yeah. I know this is backwards. It says Desert Rat Wood Creations. I had it made, but I'm not a business. This is just purely hobby. Oh, thank you for the follow. Taylin or, yeah, Taylin. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'm out of water. Oh boy, this is a lot of a lot of wood came out of this little guy. You wouldn't believe it. Can't believe I bent that thing. Oh well, maybe I can heat it back up and put it back in shape. Oh well, wait is. Time to hit the hay. Well, yeah, I'm about ready to pull the plug on this too. But I appreciate you all coming in. I got nine, it says 18, 17 people still watching, and I appreciate it. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Oh. Oh. Too much dust. But, anyways, thank you all. God bless America. God bless all of you. I appreciate every one of you, and I hope you have a blessed day today. I know it's already today, uh, it's Sunday. So, see y'all in church. And, uh, so. Yeah. I guess I'll be doing most of my stuff this late because of the how hot it is. You know, so. But, uh, I appreciate it. Happy Father's Day to you all, too. I forgot. And grandfathers. Because uh, we're all fathers, you know. And I think we all need to start teaching these kids how to work with it. Because I got my, I have my grandkids on here at four years old, working on the lathe with me. So uh, if you're a woodworker or mechanic or whatever it is, get those grandkids and those kids and get them underneath the hood. Get them on a lathe. You can make them safe as long as you hold it with them. You know that's what I do. There's one. I have a, a few videos that. Um, on here with my grandkids. Uh, last one was with my little little Nolan. He was little making something, and uh, they love it. They get to see what it looked like, and then they get to see how pretty something is when they're done, and they are quite proud of themselves. Okay, I'll see y'all later. I'm gonna shot you're gonna sign off here and get some sleep. All right, I hope y'all do, and I need to do the same thing. Good, yeah, get it, get them, uh, get them out there, show them how to do it, because this is a lost art, you know, unfortunately, they don't have wood shop, we had wood shop in high school, and grade school, and boys club, so that's how I kind of got started, there watching all the carpenters I grew up with, so, and uh, I think some of these, it's just a God-given uh, gift that you have the ability to do that, but still doesn't mean you can't learn, you know, and you will learn definitely from your mistakes, as we all do. Yeah, get those kids out there and show them how to do stuff. A lot of kids don't even know what the tools are. And I, I, that's really a shame. I'll mention a simple tool that I take for granted that you should know what it is. And my, my grandkids, they know what a lathe is. 
and they're only now five years old. The twins are five, and then I have one of seven that, that come in here and work with me. And I work with them on the sander, or the, uh, I, I let them do the uh, little scroll saw. That's pretty safe for a child, and I'm right there with them anyways. But let's start them off on a little scroll saw, I'll learn them how to do that. I let them bang nails in a board. I learn them, I have a board, you know, with nails in it. You just let them, and they have a lot of fun doing that. That's just the way to get them to learn how to manipulate a hammer, you know. So just anything we could teach these kids. And it's sad. It's really sad. They're just too into their computers and all that junk on TV. So um, this they can make a living at, but they can't make a living playing a computer game, to my knowledge. Well, I need to go get cleaned up, and I'll clean this mess up tomorrow. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, it's almost 2 o'clock in the morning. I've been here almost two hours, so I appreciate every one of you. God bless every, bless your families. Uh, God bless America. Be praying for our country. We really need it, and uh, so you know what's going on out there, and uh, so do I, and it's, doesn't look very good right now, but I, God is in control, and I trust that uh, everything will be fine. So, okay. I'm sorry that you just joined. I'm about ready to leave. So I'll say goodbye. Looks like we've got about 12 people watching. And I'm sorry I have to cut you loose. All right? I'll talk to you all later. Good night.